chapter five. There's only one solution. I'm bucking, buckling the other. No, oh, Peppa sweated off. Then one in a shoe in each hand. She. Mm -hmm. Bravely sound again. Dust dews between her toes and tiny, tiny stones bit into her feet. Pippa ran on gasping with pain and hobbling each time she stepped on a really pointed stone. She was much slower about Sue's, but she continued down the winding path. As far as she could, she hoped the seahorses were waiting for her. At last, the path flattened out and she could see the beach ahead. With an expert spurt of speed, Pippa ran across the sand, squealing with delight, the softness. Now she, faster now, she hurtled across the beach and splashed to the sea. The water was deliciously cold and soothing to her hurt feet. She lay down until, until the sea reached to her knees. The seahorses met her. Her, their enormous curved heads brushing up the ocean floor. Dipping their heads, they touched noses with Pippa. Well done, Rosella said with her eyes sparkling happily. You were very brave just now, Triton said, his voice gentle and deep. Pippa flushed. She felt... She didn't feel brave. She felt more annoyed over the fact that she fell and broke her shoe. Have, have you found something? She asked. I believe we have, Train said. Pippa's heart raced with joy. It didn't instantly sink as she could tell from the seahorse's nervous faces that this was probably not going to be good news. News. Is it a horseshoe? We asked. She asked. We think so, Rosella said. Something glittery and shiny is wedged into the rocks just at the end of that jut of land. Can you see it? Pippa stared into the distance. She could see the rocks. Free, pointy, jagged rocks. But that was all. She took a step sideways and saw something flash. Yes, she said. Said her voice rising with excitement. There's something definitely sparkly between the middle of the end of the rocks. You'll have to hurry, warned Triton. The tide has turned very soon on those rocks, and very soon those rocks will go underwater. Once the sea comes in, it's too late, Ursula said. There's already a nasty whirlpool going around those rocks. It's very dangerous. Even if our magic were not strong enough to get close to them, she said. Pippa looked at the rocks. They were so far away. The sea was rapidly creeping up on them. Suddenly, she felt very small and alone. Could she have really done this by herself? I have to, she said forcefully. Pippa rushed to the beach. The sand was soft, but under her, under her bare feet, but the walking and running down the path from the cliffs had taken more out of her than she realized. The muscles in her legs could... It started to ache with each step. She could feel herself slowing down. And no matter how hard she tried, she just couldn't make her legs work any faster. She knew the water was bubbling up the beach. Its frothy white fingers curling around the rocks. What if the tide bent her and the whirlpool pulled the golden horseshoe loose, whisking it out to sea? No! She panicked. She couldn't let that happen. 
all eight horseshoes had to be found found and put on the whispering wall in t time of midsummer day so that their magical energy would be renewed and Shabella would be safe. There was such a long way to go. It seemed hopeless. Pippa didn't give up. On she ran, her heart pounding loudly in her ears, barking all her sounds when she realized a shadow. It was only a shadow that this fell over. Over her that she was the moon. Stardust! She squealed. You were gone for such a long time. I was starting to worry about you. I came to check if you were okay. Get on my back! Stardust said, slowing to a walk. I'm so happy to see you, Pippa exclaimed. Well, what are best friends for? Pippa stumbled alongside her. Her legs were trembling and she didn't have enough energy to jump onto... to Pip Stardust's back. Stardust realized this because she stopped and kneeled down her front legs. I hope Mrs. Temple Chase isn't watching us right now, she said in a joking whisper. Pippa couldn't help laughing too. The royal nanny was just such a jerk. She wouldn't care if all seven of the missing horseshoes were in danger of being swept on the seas. Manners and behaving like a proper princess pony came first. Clearing on the pip Stardust's back, Pippa sank her hands to her silky mane and wound around them. Comfortable? Very, said Pippa. She worked on sideways as the as Stardust rose up. Only remembering to squeeze her legs onto Stardust's side to prevent herself from sliding over the pony's head. Let's go! Stardust called, bucking away with excitement as she raced away. Pippa leaned forward like a jockey, taking some of her weight from... Stardust's back as they galloped across the beach. Sand sprayed up from Stardust's hooves and her and her long tail streamed around her like a silky banner. Was it her imagination or was the sea coming in faster now? Pippa couldn't take her eyes off it as she willed to slow down. It was no good. The sea closed in, licking against the bottom of the rocks and becoming deeper and deeper. Until it spun around them around in circles like water whirling across the drain. Faster! Pippa cried. She threw herself flat against Stardust's neck. Stardust galloped harder. There, her breath coming in many wraps. Slowly the rocks came down. Down. But poor Stardust was ex just was it. Was exhausted as the pony lost spat speed. Pippa could hardly watch the sea's greeny blue fingers reaching the rocks to the glittering object wedged up there. Bravely, Stardust galloped on, but her stride was shorter. And she kept. Stumbling. Now they were closer. There's no doubt the glittering object. Object was a golden horseshoe. But there was still some distance to go to reach it. A white lane crashed over the horseshoe. No! Pippa said. They found the second horseshoe. But any second now, they were about to lose it again.